The thing is, if you're going to argue that we have to believe in the Quran because of scientific facts, then that means that it's fair to me to marshal the argument that the Quran is wrong because of its scientific errors. The Quran says that the world is flat. The Quran says there can't be a solar eclipse. Both of these statements are wrong. The Quran gets it wrong. So when the Quran says that the mountains are put there to stop the earth moving, to stop the earth moving, it is precisely wrong. Because mountains are created by the earth. Did you hear that? Okay, rolling action. Okay, thank you, Auntie. Thank so, you, you, you talked about Noah's Ark. Now, Noah's Ark was built out of wood. Noah's Ark was built out of wood before there was even the pharaohs. A historian wouldn't look for Noah's Ark. A historian would look for evidence of a global flood. Okay? Now, the absence of the evidence of a global flood is as problematic for your belief as it is for my belief. Now, the point that we're talking about, because I don't believe in a literal reading of Noah's Ark, I don't believe that there was a global flood that covered Mount Everest. I don't have that belief. Now, if you have that belief, then you have another problem that there's no evidence of a global flood. So you're only compounding your problems. What I'm saying to you is that the Quran is saying, it's saying in Surah 26, 49, it says, Pharaoh said, you put your faith in him before I give you leave. Lol, he is doubtless is your chief. Lol, he doubtless is your chief who taught you magic. But verily you shall come to know, verily I will cut off your hands and your feet, alternately, and verily, I will crucify you, every one. So the Quran is saying that the pharaohs performed crucifixion as capital punishment. Now, if the pharaohs were in the practice of crucifying people, we would expect to see some kind of evidence that the pharaohs crucified people. But we find no evidence of it. None, zero, nada, nothing. All the evidence points to the fact that crucifixion came from Assyria and Babylon, so that's Iraq and Persia, and that he only reached Egypt at the time of Alexander the Great. That's fourth century. That means there's nearly a thousand years between when this story was said to happen and the first evidence of crucifixion reaching Egypt. Do you understand why that's a problem? How do you reply? I mean, if I take your words then uh, I will come to the conclusion that whatever uh, our book says, the Bible says, yeah. or the Quran says, Bible says that all been historically proven. If I'm if I'm not wrong, that what you mean to say that uh, what Bible says that has been historically that has been historically proven. But what what I'm looking that because history has limitation. I mean, what I'm trying to say that even you believe the flood was there, you believe the ark was there, but the history doesn't even confirm the Noah Ark. But I don't talk about the flood. Let's forget about the flood. But we talk about the Ark. But the history, if you look into the history, history doesn't be believe that there was any Ark who Noah built it. So that's what I'm saying, that there is a limitation on the historical because history is something like you really hardly to grasp. I come completely, I'm not discounting the factor of the history. History has a really significant impact on our let us study when we go about the temple destruction that's was the history which helps us so what i'm saying that we can't uh, talk about history precisely or very conclusively because history has also limitation in its sight okay so here's the problem right it is true that the absence of evidence is not evidence of absence that is true but we're not saying that history is silent about a topic what we're saying is that history points in a completely different direction. Points in a completely other way. That's what we're saying. So the history points to the fact that the Quran has got it wrong. Now, here's why this is a problem. This Quran says that if it was from any other than Allah, I would find contradictions therein. That if this was from any other than Allah, I would find errors inside of it. Well, I'm telling you and I'm giving you my reasons that I found errors in the Quran, which means according to the Quran, it's not from Allah. By comparison, 
We Christians have no comparative belief. We don't have a verse in the Bible that says that if this Bible was from any other than God, you would find errors in the Bible. It doesn't say that. The Bible claims infallibility about saying who God is and about how we should be, how we should live. That's it. That's all the infallibility it claims. And all the Bible is theology. Every part of it is theology. Theology through history, theology through poetry, theology through biography, theology through parable. It's theology, theology, theology. The Quran is claiming to be perfect. Is that fair? Am I misrepresenting the Quran by saying it claims to be perfect? So if the Quran claims to be perfect and then I find that it's not perfect, it's fair to me to say that the Quran isn't from Allah. Do you understand? Yeah. So what I'm trying to say, Bob, exactly, I'm understanding where you're coming from. I mean, just this word that the Paroha says that I'm going to crucify you, the whole Quran is uh, like meaningless, it's something like a really, uh, and based on the historical evidence, that's something really for me is a strange. The reason is that because I mean, saying that this Quran's from the God itself, something like a, 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 a claim which no other book says and makes him more significant. And the things that I ask you a question about Ark, you you didn't reply me back that because Ark, you and me believe that there was a Noah Ark, but history doesn't say about that. Even if you search it, when the first Ark was built, you will see that was built in 1400 years before. But the Noah time, Noah time was way, way before than that. Like a four, five thousand way before that. So I can say, I can say precisely and you can say that Ark was built 5000 years before. But if you see history, history says the Ark was built 1400 years before. So my problem is that. So all you've done is compound the problems of the Quran. You've just made it worse. But no, no, you don't understand my position. I don't believe that the story of Noah talks about a literal global flood. No, no, I'm not talking about I don't believe that. Yeah. The ark was made of wood. No historian would look for wood that's that old. They wouldn't look for that. But the point is, but, but the point is that crucifixion. I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, but no, but no, you don't understand my position, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You really don't understand my position. I don't believe in a global flood. I don't believe but that the waters the swept the over the mountains of Everest. Let me, let me, let me, let me. No historian would look for the ark. They wouldn't look for the ark. It's made of wood. The point is that your Quran is saying that the pharaohs practiced crucifixion. So we would expect, because it is state policy, that therefore we would find evidence of crucifixion from Egypt. We don't. All the evidence points to the fact that crucifixion came from the Assyrians and the Babylonians. Now, I, that doesn't have a problem for me. It doesn't have a problem for me. Because I don't believe in a book. Because I, firstly, the Bible doesn't claim that crucifixion was invented by the Egyptians. The first time crucifixion is mentioned in the Bible is a prophecy in the Psalms in the time of David. And that's a thousand years before Christ was crucified. And it was uh, 400 years before crucifixion was invented. So the first talk of crucifixion in the Bible is a prophecy that testifies to the reality and the truth of the Bible. But your Quran, the first time that it ascribes crucifixion to history, gets its history wrong. Now, if you're going to make that doubly worse by saying that, well, historians also don't find Noah's Ark, so therefore we can't believe in Noah's Ark, what we're saying is that the Quran has got an error. We, now, that means we've got, to, we've got to be talking about something that we can test. And when, his, when crucifixion came about, it's something that we can look into. We can trace the history of crucifixion. We can trace it from the Assyrians, sorry, from the Babylonians. We can trace it through the Assyrians. We can trace it through the Persians. We can trace it through um, Alexander the Great. We can trace it through the Romans. And then we can trace it to its final ending by the Christians. So we, we are know the history of crucifixion. And in no way does it support the Quranic narrative. The Quranic narrative is just flat out error, wrong, false. It's like when the Quran says the earth is flat. So, 
I don't remember where the Quran says the earth is flat. I haven't seen any place. But anyway, we will talk about that. Let's stick to the point down. Uh, you mentioned that uh, why historian will look into the wooden ark. I mean, why? my question would be the same. Why would someone looking for the crucifixion? I mean, it's not a question about looking for something. I mean, it's the presence. If the ark was there, and 5,000 years before, which you and me are believed, but the historian uh, says the ark was built 1,400 years before, we clearly know that there are some history mistakes because there was an ark 5,000 years before. And the dispute, we not talk about 1,000 years, 2,000 years. I mean, that dispute is very significant. The ark was 5,000 years before, but if you Google it, you will only find 1,400 years before. So my question is that it's not necessarily that there are some punishments over there which has been reported into the history because that could be possible that there was a punishment over there just because the punishment hasn't been discussed in history doesn't make them that it wasn't available over there i mean this is my uh, this is the way if i unbiasedly objectively or impartially i look into it but what i'm saying to you bro and this is the point that you've got to deal with is we're not talking about silence we're not saying, one second, we're not saying history is silent about this topic. So is for the ark. No. So is for the ark. History, is, not silent history for the ark. is completely silent about the ark. No, no, no. Okay. Yes, it is. Let's, let's it's completely it. silent. But hold on one second. I'm not getting off this topic. History is totally silent about the ark. That, that it doesn't, that it makes no comment on it at all. But what we are saying is that history does talk about crucifixion. It talks about. It talks, we see where crucifixion started. The Quran has crucifixion at the time. It, so it, what it says, Wikipedia is not an academic source, brother. Uh, uh, so the, the journal, the, the federal United States medical journal is, is an academic paper. And it says that the history of crucifixion goes like this. Assyria, sorry. Babylon, Assyria, Persia, Alexander the Great into Egypt, Romans, Christians, end. That is what history says. You're making an argument assuming that silence is saying nothing. I'm saying that silence is saying something and it contradicts your Quran. No, what I'm saying silence. I'm saying you believing on a religiously on the history is wrong because no one should believe that religious whatever oh sorry history I'm sorry I'm, what I'm saying I can't what I'm trying to say what history says we shouldn't believe on that as a set on stone because history doesn't itself says conclusively about something. I agree I'm not saying that yeah, you, you, but, but all you're doing bro is all you're doing is airing a question of probability. Yes, yes, yes. Right, but that probability diminishes as the evidence increases. Agreed? Emerge, emerge yeah. Yes. Emerge. So as evidence emerges, emerge, yes. right, hold on. And would you agree as something moves forward in time, there's more evidence for it? Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. So evidence of some popular activity goes like an upward facing cone. Would you agree? That evidence for a popular activity or a popular thing goes like an upward facing cone. Yeah. Yeah, so it would go like it would go like this, right? So that's what we find. We find that the upward-facing cone of evidence all points to a, all points to the Babylonians and the Assyrians as the origin of crucifixion. The evidence cone increases from their period in history, from their geographical position, and it flows from where they were westward. So this is the point, if we're talking about probability. History works in probability, you're quite right to point that out. But therefore, that makes my argument stronger, not weaker. Because the evidence cone goes like this at the time of the Assyrian, well, goes like this at the time and the place of the Assyrians and Babylonians. There is nothing before it, nothing. Which means that the Quran, and I'm going to get on to why in my, in my next talk, the Quran is putting something into history that is wrong. Just like it does with the crucifixion. Just, just like it does with a mosque at Jerusalem. Just like it does with chainmail at the time of David. It gets its history wrong. Can I, can I say something? Maybe support your ar argument a little bit. 
I mean, why you assume that everybody, all the Muslims, believed in Quran that is coming from God? At the time, they were fighting between them that they say Quran is not from God, it's word of Muhammad. No, I mean, let's stick with the point. Yeah, let's stick Other, with the point. Otherwise, it's going to be like a going yeah, around, around in circle. What I'm saying that if you're saying, if you're giving a uh, con impression for the... Uh, Which you agree with? Yeah, of course, yeah, crucifixion one. I'm asking why you're not giving the same analogy for the ark one? I mean, what's the difference between the ark and... I don't know how many times I can say this in plain English. I don't believe in the global flood as a literal event. There is no evidence for it. I am being consistent. Now... So there is no ark, never been ark. No, I'm not saying there wasn't an ark. No, I'm not saying there wasn't an ark. What I'm saying...